chassis replacement part two of 1983 conversion to a general electric clock radio. the volume control circuit is done. Now what I have to do is move over to the tuning circuit and remove the tuning circuit wires one at a time from the dead board and put them on the other board. So, looks like I got several jumpers going across here. Evidently, they relied on the frame of the tuning capacitor to be part of the circuitry. And since the tuning capacitor is missing, so is part of the circuitry. So. I also have a, a jumper going across it. Representing the tuning capacitor. Kind of like playing uh, one of those uh, draw by numbers children's games where you just connect the dots and very primitive technology now. These were very commonly in use when I was a kid. In fact, there was a lot of automobiles still around that still had only AM radios. And because of that, there was still a market for playing music on AM. board I have a jumper connecting the other two points and this again is because they were relying on the frame of the tuning capacitor to bridge across the board to the other part of the circuit and I've got a broken trace here so I'm going to carefully try to put this in here without losing it. soldering looks as bad as it did when I was a kid. Okay, and this goes in this hole, which connects back together this part of the board. I vaguely remember doing this. Back when kids used to build radios in school, and I might have even shown this to one shop teacher. Okay, my bypass lines are in place. So now I'm, these two are the actual tuning circuit lines. All the rest of those were grounds. And this one goes 
to the top. It's really pretty neat. I showed this to Retro Chad like a year ago, and because he had the radio that with a bad tuning capacitor, so if he wants me to, and he's willing to give me his address, I'll mail him this tuning capacitor right here because I know he has the exact same radio, and his the fins are bent or something; they shorten out. I guess in Texas they still have radio stations, so it's kind of cool you can use your radios. And in my opinion, I think it's because the cars don't rust away, so they're still using cars from the 80s. Which means they still have cars that only have AM radios, so there's enough AM radios to warrant having stations. That's about the only thing I can figure. Okay, now the tuning capacitor circuit is done. And yes, it looks as bad as it tastes. Now the only thing that's left is the speaker lines and the two that supply power to the board. And one of these I must have redirected because originally I think there was an interlock. This one's got an interlock right next to the output transformer. Evidently maybe this one didn't have an interlock. And I'm not sure how that worked because the clock has to turn the power to the board on and off. So I'm just going to wire it to the wires exactly the way I wired it before because I must have researched it. This is in the same place. In fact, it looks like I had just broke the interlocks off. So This is the hot. Probably went to the clock. And the radio power came back on this white. From the clock. So that's how I'm going to hook it up. I'm going to have to make a part three to do that.